and a very warm welcome. You're watching The Ladies Club. Thank you so much for joining us as we bring you another exciting episode of the leading women's sports talk show. My name is Valen Kirkley. An exciting time for all of us as Banyana Banyana takes part in their very first ever FIFA Women's World Cup. The Ladies Club. We wish them all the best. For joining us as we celebrate the trailblazers, the game changers in women's sports. You can get in touch with us. Woman in Sport at Valen Kirtley at Lebo Motswedi at Sport at SABC Hapu or Hopula Husevedisa hashtag The Ladies Club. So today we're going to be shining the spotlight on women who are pushing the boundaries when it comes to combat sports and martial arts. Now, martial art continues to be perceived as a masculine sport uh, owing to its connection to, of course, combat and fighting. As you know, women are told not to fight because it's unladylike. And because women are supposedly not hard enough for the martial arts stuff, well, we'll be chatting about uh, women who have kicked those notions out of the door and are punching those stereotypes while breaking boundaries or at the very same time. But before we get going with our chat, we'd like to set the tone with an inspiring quote. Manzor Nagajenu uh, come from Pipa Shabalala Aring. Don't let anyone tell you what you can and cannot do. If you want to do something, go ahead and do it without fear that you will be judged for doing something traditionally male. Stereotypes are made to be broken. Kiman Zwa Pipa O, who is a fun-loving, hard-working Johannesburg lady who is, her, who is passionate for all things tech. She's also well-known for presenting The Verge, a TV show dedicated to video games, and is currently the presenter and co-producer of Glitched Africa. Well, she studied fine arts at WIT and then later 3D animation, where she got a master's. Today, she writes for multiple publications on the subject of video games and technology. She was on the Mail and Guardian's 2013 list of top 200 young South Africans and the 2016 Brand as a 40 under 40 list. And what I really like about her quotes mm. is that she says, you know, she's into gaming, which is perceived to be, male. you know, this male yeah. area. Um, and it's growing exponentially, as we see with esports. True. But she said, you know what, I'm going to go into that sector and I'm going to go and follow my passion. And that's what we always say here on The Ladies Club. You've got to find mm -hmm. what you're passionate about and follow it without fear or favour. And I like the fact that, for, for me, what I read into that quote is the fact that I'm going to do what I want, how I want it. And I'm not, it's not because it's a male dominated or it's female dominated, it doesn't matter. So I'm not even looking at the sex or the genre of a particular issue. I will do what I want when I want, however I feel I need to do it without fear or favor of who's watching and who yeah. wants me to do it. Yeah, I think I think a lot is made about being the first woman to do something or, you know, yes, um, yes. you need to be pushing boundaries. I think that yes. those things will come, you yeah. will be a trailblazer you will be a game changer as long as you're following what's in your heart that's actually where it's got to start sure. because anybody that's achieved anything in yeah. life they'll tell you i didn't go out there so that i could make history mm. you know or you know become this that or or the next thing or to be considered like this i followed what was in my heart and what i was truly passionate about absolutely we're about to go on a quick break but before we do let's just take a look at what's making news that we work us who are finding the money and is set to earn the biggest paycheck yet yeah, Suffer President Danny Yodanawila Abuahore Banyana Banyana will be receiving 320,000 rands if they reach the last 16th stage of the FIFA Women's World Cup in France. They will earn 520,000 rand for reaching the quarterfinals, 670,000 rand for getting to the semi finals, and 920,000 rand if they manage to win the tournament in France. It's the first time that the national women's side will earn the same bonuses as their male counterparts. Finally, finally. And now I'd like to reach, I'd like to see them actually go further in the competition. I know we're in a tough group with the likes of Germany, but um, I still would like to see them just go forward and go go further ahead in the tournament and finally get, the, they get that money. I, I also want to see that. Remember, you can get involved on the conversa in the conversation rather on all social media platforms. It's so easy. Hashtag the ladies club will be back with our game changer who is in the studio she's looking absolutely fabulous i can't wait to start talking <laughs> to her michaela white boy is coming up after this <laughs> well, 
Welcome back to Buhila Nanolarna La Mafumahati Eling, the ladies clap on one more canaling your bait. You hope along horror you can get in touch with us on our social media platforms at Sport at SABC at Berlin Kretli at Lebo Motswedi as we talk all things game changers and trailblazers. Just remember our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. We're joined in studio now by South Africa's number one ranked judoka, Michaela Whiteboy. She's been our national champion for the last three years at Sina level and she is our game changer today. Born in Port Elizabeth, Michaela did not have it all easy growing up. Her dad sadly passed away when she was still young and her mother had to work twice as hard as a domestic worker. She, however, did not allow her background to determine her future. Her judo journey started when she was only 10 years old and she has never looked back. Today, she boasts an illustrious list of accomplishments in the fighting world. Back in 2015, as she won the African Junior Judo Championships and had the privilege of representing South Africa at the Senior World Champs uh, just last year in Azerbaijan. But I won't get too much into detail because she's here to tell us the story and her journey. Michaela, good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. Well, uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> now, you've been at it since you were 10, 23 now, and you have not looked back. What made you get into the sport from the beginning? Well, I went with a friend and I never looked back, I never stopped. Yeah. Uh, so, w tell, us, uh, tell us about what happened, you know? So, did your friend just come and say, hey, I'm doing this thing, um, come <laughs> with me. I know you may have never heard of what the sport is, yeah. but come and check it out. It exactly uh, that happened. Um, and I went with her, I was sitting, watching her train, and I was like, what are they doing? Yeah. But it was very interesting, especially like if the girls fall and that was my <laughs> yeah so i fell in love with it and then i started doing judo and where's the friend now well she slipped off along the way yeah so you, you so you you went with a friend and the bug then got into you and you've never looked back uh but what made you continue uh taking part in something that was probably not really in the forefront of what you wanted to be when you were that age I think it was just the motivation of my background and uh, just wanting to do something that I could be proud of. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, that journey. I know when I was reading that intro and I mentioned your father and your <laughs> mom, you got a little bit teary-eyed. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, my dad passed away at the age of 11 and I could remember that um, Exactly the next weekend, I had to do judo. So I thought I would do it for him. I would go and fight and I would do it for him. And I'm sure he's so proud of you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. I just have to get up and give you a hug because... <sighs> Thank you. And how important has, oh. has, has your dad been in your journey? Well, he was a school teacher and... He would always help me with my work. He was an inspiring man, so mm. I would always, when I'm in a difficult time, I would think, what would he have done to help me? And always think that he's looking down, so I can do it. Yeah. Obviously, he's had an incredible impact into your life, uh, and um, it is a touching story, and, and I can see Valen also uh, very emotional with it. How does it make you feel, the fact that our, yeah. our game changer is also now? <laughs> Uh, I lost my dad when I was also 12, yeah, so I completely right. understand, you know, where, how, how that impacts you at such a crucial age. Mm. But it's amazing because what running was for me, I, I kind of think that maybe judo was for you. It, mm. was, it, was, it helped you to actually cope yes. um, and it really opened up the world to you. So tell us a little bit about that, about pouring your energy into the sport and then achieving what you were able to achieve. Mm. because. You were in Port Elizabeth, then you got the opportunity to come to Pretoria, to come to the high performance school, and then to go on to study and see the world. Yeah, so back um, at home, well, I was doing judo and my coach just saw something in me. I think I just grew in the sport mm. even at that young age. So he applied for me to go to the university, wow. um, the sports school. And uh, even at that age, I knew I had to make the decision because it would help my mom. Mm. And yeah, so I left the school and it was hard. It mm. was really hard. Um, but I don't know how I made it through every day, but somehow I did. And how wow. important has your mom been 
being both parents, so to speak, in, in your journey? Yeah, you know, she's, she's been with me along the way. Even the first time I had to come to the school, she brought me here. And just seeing her leave was terrifying. <laughs> but um, just knowing that I'm, I'm making her proud, I think mm -hmm. that's what's keeping me going. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing because when we actually see you on the judo mat, <laughs> throwing people and having them around the neck and stuff like that, we, we think, sure, you know, she's, she's got a lot of fight in her. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like, because I have two names, you yeah. know, Jirene and Michaela, I feel like when, when I'm at university or just being around people, I'm Michaela. Mm -hmm. But when I get onto the mat, I'm Jirene. It's like a change. Tell I'm me a really? different yeah. person. Yeah. What, 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 tell us about the change when you, you become the other, the other person. <laughs> what comes over you? What is it about the other name that brings out a different kind of Michaela on the mat? It's... You, I just become this girl that's hungry to succeed. Like, you get onto the mat, and even though there's struggles, there's times where you feel like, I can't do this. It's just like, but Jerene, you're on the mat now, so you have to go. You have to keep on going. Yeah. You've managed to do a lot. What would you say is the one highlight for you that really stands out, that you're kind of most proud mm -hmm. of in your judo career at this point? Definitely winning the Africa Championships this year. Um, because it's been 20 years um, that someone, uh, a female actually, has won Africa Championships. Wow. So after 20 years, I have now achieved this goal and I, I feel really blessed. Sure, yeah. and, and you still obviously want to go to the Worlds with that yeah. um, a little bit later on this year with that kind of confidence, momentum as well. And the preparations for that then? We have, different, we have a lot of camps and competitions coming up. I, just looking at the path, I'm already tired. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, especially the confidence I had at yeah. um, Africa Championships, I want to go with that, that type of spirit. I want to go to the world, yes. Uh, judo is not a sport that a lot of South Africans know about, mm. but it's actually on the international stage, we've fared okay. I mean, we had Zach Piontek winning a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. Mm. I mean, just tell us a little bit about the South African judo community. Well, Zach trains um, at my club, actually, yeah, okay. so I, I look up to him. He's a, he's a great person. Um, judo is not as popular. Well, if we tell people that I'm doing judo, they would think karate. And then I have to explain, no, it's more like wrestling or you have to throw the person. Um, so the community is small. The, the sport has um, decreased a lot, especially in the female side. But mm -hmm. we still have that spirit that we, we actually want it to grow. And that's what also keeps me going, that if I do something, the girls can see, well, I can do it. Yeah. And breaking the 20-year history, um, I mean, it's really incredible. So do you think perhaps that will influence other women, other ladies? Because you're saying that you see a lot of them pulling back mm -hmm. from judo as a sport to come back to the sport. Yes, definitely. And um, um, at a competition afterwards, mm. there was a, a young girl that approached me and I felt so inspired, actually just, just motivating her and um, thinking about how the elders used to do that or the, the mm. older generation used to do that with me and now I have to do it with the younger generation. Yeah. And what did she say to you? She was just like, I want to be a champion like you. Yeah. Oh, I got so excited. We had definitely had to take a selfie. <laughs> and what did you say? Um, I just told her to keep on going, pushing. I know it's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of struggles and tough times. But if she pushed through, she'll make it. Michaela says that just looking at the schedule that's ahead of her for the rest of the <laughs> year, building up to your walls, it makes her tired. And you've got to put that into perspective. Michaela is studying at the moment. Yeah. And then she trains four hours a day, two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening. And that's every single day. Whew, that's a lot. I'm breathless. <laughs> but we're going to find out more about that training schedule and more about Michaela Whiteboy when we come back. Stay with the Ladies Club.
welcome back. Let's get right into it and have a look at Trailblazer today, who is current clearance slower, the well-known karateka, who is listed among the top 100 karate competitors of all time. And of course, she gained international acclaim when she walked away with a gold medal, Kassel Musa 2001, at the World Games in Japan. Yeah, well, she shares the name of another South African winner in Olympic swimmer, yes. Karen Prinsler. But yeah. we are speaking about the lady that has been so dominant and a force in her field, outclassing many other opponents with great ease. She has been South Africa's JKA female open Carter champion 12 times, an open Kumite champion seven times, and was ranked number one in open Carter and Kumite under 60 kilograms more than 10 times. Whew. Sure, she really has and had an, an incredible career. But looking at our game changer, still with us in studio, that's uh, Michaela. Michaela, let's talk about the women that have influenced you um, in your career so far it, you're still very young but you still have achieved so much more than any other person um having broken that 20 year record i still can't still get over it but who has been instrumental in making sure that you stay at the height of your career at the moment i think it would be my coach definitely he's 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 been like a second father to me and he's inspired me along the way and who's your coach um, Nikola Filipov, he is originally from Bulgaria mm -hmm. and he's been in South Africa, I think, for 14 years. Um, he f he's qualified men for the Olympic Games and I think this is a game changer for himself, <laughs> um, having to have two potential females to qualify for the Olympic Games. Tell us a little bit about uh, the Olympic journey that you're currently on because August is a massive month for you. All Africa mm -hmm. Games in Morocco, then it's on to World Championships uh, at a test venue in Tokyo. So how is your Olympic dream looking? Um, to be honest, I would say um, before April, I wouldn't have thought that it would have been possible for mm. me to qualify for the Olympic Games. But having to achieve um, getting the African champion title, now I can see that I can do it. It's going to be a long journey. It's going to be tough, yeah. especially with World Champs and Africa Games mm. coming up and the yeah. preparation. But having that vision um, gives me hope. Yeah. You already Valen mentioned earlier on that you're training for four hours a day. Is this seven days a week? Uh, we have six days a week and Sunday we get rest, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> what goes into your diet. Do you eat what you like or do you have a very rigid diet that you need to follow? Because you look amazing. <laughs> Whatever I eat it just goes back out in sweat. So you eat every, anything and everything? Yes. And even whenever I want. So um, it's just before competition, obviously, we have a certain weight category yeah. that we have to fight. So maybe the day before you start eating a little bit less just to be on the, on, in your, within your weight category. But that's all. As the top female judoka in your weight category, I mean, how do you find people to compete against here in South Africa? Or are you training with guys? There is girls, but it's um, younger. They're definitely younger. It's hard to find partners um, and co actual competition in South Africa. There's not a lot of females, especially my weight. Yeah. You know? um, so it's more international. That's why we set out for training camps, competitions. It's vital for us. Whereas for someone that's maybe competing in France or for Germany, they do this on a regular basis. So when they go to competitions, it's way easier. Okay, yeah. let's talk about that a bit uh, because we haven't mentioned your weight. You're 1.53 uh, meters tall and your weight category is what, 40? 48. 48. 48. So what, what, what is it about the, that category that then you're not finding um, a lot of competitors here at home? To be petite is, 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 is a struggle. There is a lot of competition elsewhere, but not here. There's not a Are lot not of girls. We're not a petite bunch. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm very featherweight. Like the lowest weight you can find. In, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've, we've mentioned the, the training um, and how, how much you have to train. But then you also are busy with your, with your honours. Yes. Um, Somehow, somewhere, mm -hmm. I find time. And uh, I think that if it wasn't for judo, I wouldn't have been this far with my, with my studies. It, it, it balances for me. I can't study the whole day. Um, I really don't know how students do that. But having judo and having studies, it's like a balanced lifestyle for me. 
actuary, this is an honors in internal auditing. That's also not the easiest. Uh, so you very must be very good at numbers. Numbers is not really my thing, but I love investigation. Is that, all, is that what it is? Yes, I like the forensic side of oh, internal auditing. Yes, just, yes. yes, getting in details and in depth with the documents, the people, um, the processes in the companies. Yes. Did your mom ever think that judo would have taken you as far as it has? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so, you know, I, I actually don't know, um, with my busy lifestyle, we don't get to communicate as often, but I'm, I'm just happy that I'm making her proud, that's all that matters for me. Oh, and she certainly, certainly <laughs> is, I think your mom is sitting at home and I think that she has got a whole box of tissues with her, listening to what you have to say, because you've certainly been a fabulous role model for for her and, and for your whole family. Uh, tell us a little bit about the family, brothers and sisters. Uh, we are a family of five girls. Wow. So it's wow. me, including um, four sisters. Um, the one sister is from my dad's side, so she unfortunately doesn't stay with us. Okay. But my other three sisters, loving, full of spirit. Okay. Or over here. In judo? No. I am actually the only one that's doing sports. With a lot of the smaller Olympic sports, um, there is a concern that once you are finished, maybe your studies, mm -hmm. um, that you won't be able to make a profession out of it. But a lot of uh, really top class judokas have gone into mixed martial arts. Mm. Further on in the future, is that something that you would look at maybe doing? Uh, I really don't know, okay. but if I do, I would like to have my, my coach by my side because he okay. was, I think, a, a former, um, I'm not sure, it's also something with martial, martial arts, arts, but not judo, okay. it was sambo, sambo, oh, okay, yes. yeah. it's also a martial arts sport, so I would love to have him with me. You know, actually, that uh, Khabib uh, Nurmagomedev, yeah. the, yes. uh, the guy that uh, yeah. is unbeaten mm. and fought against mm. Conor McGregor, he actually twice won a world championship at that uh, yes. sambo. Wow, so looking at what you still need to achieve, you still have that ticket to the Olympic Games that you want to represent South Africa. Yes, definitely. Um, it's, it's been the biggest dream. Um, like I said, I didn't think that it would be reality yeah. as far as it is now. Now I can really see, I can see it right here. <laughs> yeah. And what, what would it take for you to qualify for the Olympic Games? So with judo, it works with ranking points and uh, you have to have points within the top 22 females of your weight category to qualify. And so how far are you from achieving that at the moment? At the moment, I'm number 36 and we're going up. Yes, <laughs> or lower, or up lower though. Because you need to be uh, top yes, 25. Up yeah, but lower. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to go lower. You don't yeah, yeah, yeah. the world rankings, yeah. but it's going to be yeah, lower, lower yeah. in number. <laughs> what is your advice to people that may look at the sport and say, oh, no, I don't know about all mm. that mm -hmm. pulling and throwing <laughs> and grappling and on the floor, you know, all that kind of stuff. What do you have to say to them? Um, judo is not as rough and tough as it seems. There's a lot of things you learn. You learn a lot of values and you grow as a person, self discipline, respect, time management. So yes, it's a hard sport, and, uh, but it's also self-defense. So if you can do the sport, you know definitely. If someone wants to chop you, you'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, thank you so much for joining us. And I wish you all the best in the world champs that are coming up by the All Africa Games and getting that number down or higher but lower <laughs> for the Olympic Games and representing South Africa. Thank you so much. You've been absolutely amazing and joining us in studio today. Michaela has been wonderful. All the best of luck. I know August is a massive month and also it's a big month here in South Africa being a woman's Women's month. Days. So take that woman power with you as you have set new records for women judokas here in South Africa. Thank you for having me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the time we have for this week. Ladies Club. Thank you so much for spending it with us. Remember, any ideas, trailblazers, game changers, are sent through an email. The email is on your screen or talk to us on social media platforms. Yes, it's so easy. Uh, you can join the conversation anytime, anywhere. You know, that's how it is with social media these days. Hashtag the Ladies Club. Uh, until we meet again, remember that greatness is always earned and never given. From myself, Dan and Kuti Lebo, and our whole team. Bye-bye.